Are you? Mm. In, I feel like you talk a talk about horoscopes, Lewis. No, I did when I was single because <laughs> I needed to meet people. <laughs> But um, <laughs> then I got a girlfriend and I was like, this is all bullshit and you're all idiots. <laughs> <laughs> but did you meet her on account of it? No, God, no. Okay. No, 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 no. I've and also, to do it. No. No. Uh, but also um, Gemini is the one that is like the one everyone hates. Yeah, the crazy one. So oh. it, it kind of gave me a bit of a bad boy image, I think, okay. out there on the dating apps. <laughs> and then you disappointed people yeah. when they met you yeah. in real it's life. It's very polite. Hello, welcome to Silver Bullet. Uh, our special guest today, our guest bulleteer is Veronica Milsom. Oh, hey, yeah, happy to be here. You know, I think I have the same problem that you guys have, which is crippling anxiety, correct? Of course, oh, wow. So Assumptions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in fact, when, Lu- when Lewis called me and was like, hey, do you want to be on um, our podcast uh, where we're talking about mental health problems? I was like, oh, do I? Oh, yeah, I guess the anxiety. <laughs> Um, yeah, in fact, I, I did something about 15 years ago that solved nearly all of my problems. What? It's crazy because I, I obviously um, I have known you longer than almost anyone else mm. in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I've seen the anxiety happen, <laughs> but I don't think it's like as constant as it used to be. Mm. And I never knew how you did it. I um, About 15 years ago, I just started dating this guy who has now become my husband. Gross. Ooh la la. <laughs> and one time we were walking down Ackland Street in St Kilda, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'd walked down there many times before and I'd always seen this sign um, for a psychic. And I'd thought, should I go in? And then I thought, ah, $65. It was a lot of money back then in the olden days, 15 (laughs) years ago. And I thought, yeah, you know, I'm going to try it. Mostly, I think, because I had anxieties about my future, the future of my career, also about whether we were going to work out. And I needed answers on that. You Uh and Nick, you were looking at me when you said that. We worked out fine. No, no. (laughs) you're the only person in the room apart from Hing. (laughs) It was me and Nick, whether we would work out. Turns out, also fine. Um, But so I went into this uh, psychic. So it's like a room where it's scented with like sandalwood incense and there's velvet, crushed velvet covering all of the furniture. I don't know what, she probably doubles as like an accountant and then she's like, quickly, there's someone coming in, throws the crushed velvet over. And then she was like, oh, do you want a tarot card reading? And I was like, are you kidding? That's like woo-woo witchcraft. I'm here for a straight up psychic reading. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm here for the scientific yeah, crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so she basically sat me down and told me everything that I wanted to hear. Really? It was like the opposite of a therapy session. She wasn't like, what do you think? She was like, here's what I think. Mm. And it's all the things you want to hear. Yeah. Uh, essentially that I would live a long life. She looked at my palms, you know, mm-hmm. I, it's, I'm sure it was made that up, but it made me feel good. For those <laughs> oh my God, enormous <laughs> hands. And she told me that I... She's like, oh my goodness, it's a damn novel on this. <laughs> <laughs> this woman's going to live forever. <laughs> 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 and uh, she said that I was about to have a huge moment in my career and that yeah. it was going to really lead to something special for me. And she said that I was going to get married and have kids, which is what I wanted to hear too. Oh. Um, and so who, like, who could say whether that special moment was like one of the things that happened was that I got on Sean McCullough's Mad as Hell or right. in Ben Elton's Live from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Two equally successful productions. <laughs> it, it all kind of worked out and it made me feel good and I walked away being like, yes. So to be clear, when you say this solved all your problems, mm-hmm. it's not that like she did some witchcraft on you mm-hmm. and and could accurately depict everything in your life. Mm. But it was more that like just having something to hold on to and work towards reassured you in the anxiety you were feeling of your future. Yes, exactly. It was kind of like, I guess what people get from horoscopes. Are you, mm. in, I feel like you talk a talk about horoscopes, Lewis. No, I did when I was <laughs> single because I needed to meet people. <laughs> But um, <laughs> then I got a girlfriend and I was like, this is all bullshit and you're all idiots. <laughs> <laughs> but did you meet her on account of it? No, God, no. Okay. No, 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 no. Um, but when you're single, if you're a single straight man, <laughs> yeah. you have to, and you just want to be able to get through like the step one of dating apps. Yeah, yeah. You have to be able to talk like with, re- not like with great detail, but it just saves time if you can go, I'm a Gemini. I was born around this time. It just gives a certain amount of people like That's horrible. Yeah, it's yeah. a nightmare. It's actually yeah. a nightmare. Mm. I've and never also had to do it. No, no. Uh, but also, um, Gemini is the one that is like 
that one everyone hates. Yeah, the crazy one. So oh. it, it kind of gave me a bit of a bad boy image, I think, okay. out there on the dating apps. <laughs> then you disappointed people yeah. when they met you yeah. in real it's life. very polite. Well, Rod, obviously when we heard that you'd been to a psyching, that was your silver bullet. Lewis and I had to go and try it. Mm. So we did that this week. We haven't <laughs> spoken about it at all. And I'll tell you what, mine was quite a doozy of an experience. <gasps> I should say I... Um, I'm very sceptical of psychics and I was raised in a religious family. And so all of that stuff, psychics, tarot, clairvoyance, it's always been very off limits to me because even though I've undone some of the programming from my upbringing, this is one thing that I've never felt the need to overcome because I'm always like, ah, it's bullshit anyway. Who cares? Right. Mm. But also they're witches. And what if they get exactly, you know, that's that. So I'm, I'm like, I'm like, it's, it's safe to stay away. But when I heard that it had affected your life so well, I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. So I called up a I just Googled psychics in Sydney. <laughs> yeah. Right, which is where I live. Mm-hmm. And and I found one that was in an area, um, in a very touristy area of Sydney. I went to the rocks. Oh to wow. go to a psychic. I mean, that might be a fancy one, is it? That's a bit of a um Well, I don't know. Scary. I'll tell you what, it was 70 bucks for half an hour. Ooh, so okay. you know, as, as the cost of lettuce skyrockets, <laughs> the cost of psychics <laughs> yeah. has maintained itself over a decade. Jeez, isn't that interesting? Okay. <laughs> Um, and I arrived, I booked in, made an appointment, Wait. I arrived and they were like, oh, she's running late. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was a red flag. Mm. Cause I think if you're a psychic yeah. and your whole thing is being able to read the future, yeah. you know, keep to a schedule. Can surely. she predict the traffic? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I waited in a, I, I waited in a room similar to the one you described, jangly stuff, crushed velvet. <laughs> there were at least three cats. <laughs> I walk in, I, I finally get called upstairs into the psychic's chamber. and Because um, <laughs> it's a chamber, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, it's behind this big curtain. And I'm like, do I close the curtain? She goes, no, 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 leave it open. You're safe here. <laughs> and uh, she had vaguely a, I would say, a European accent of some description. I, I couldn't quite place it. I sat down and she was like, I can tell immediately you are frustrated with your life. Oh. And I think that was a misreading of the situation. Because I was frustrated that she'd made me wait for 15 minutes. Mm. And that was the energy that was coming off me. So she obviously <laughs> got the right energy, but did, like, completely misread the cause of the energy. Yeah. <laughs> so then. I guess she was right in that moment, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I immediately was like, this person is incredibly perceptive at reading my micro cues or emotional state or whatever. Um, and then um, she said, What do you want to know? And I said, I'm starting a podcast with some friends. Mm. How will the podcast go? That was obviously the first thing in my my mind. Yeah, sure. And she said, Don't ask anything about kids in the future (laughs) and any of that nonsense. Well, go straight for the big one, the pod. (laughs) Exactly. So she said to me, Well, I can tell you're very unfulfilled in your current life. Oh. And I was like, Wow, it's a bit of a slam on Lewis (laughs) Hope. Yeah. (laughs) She goes, Your current current work is not making you happy. Nothing is making you happy. This change will be good for you. And oh. I was like, she's doing all of this off the fact that I'm frustrated, which she's misread as being about my life. When in reality, it's very specifically about the fact that she made me wait. Mm. But obviously, I'm also conflict avoidant. So I refuse to like, I didn't actually say to her, I'm angry because I had to wait 15 minutes. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But I guess it's a fair bet for her that people are probably coming to her in a frustrated state. You know, that'd True. be 99% of the clientele that come to her. That's True. the reason that they do. So she said that this podcast is going to be huge. Really? She said it's going to be huge. She said we're going to employ a lot of people. Oh, that she goes, feels unlikely. She goes, the, the, she goes, this show you're working on, it's going to be big. Wow. It's going to involve a lot of people. You're going to have to work very hard, but it's going to be the best thing you ever do. And I was like, wow. oh, my goodness. She's oh. never listened to a podcast yeah. before, has <laughs> no, she? No, she doesn't no. know how they work. <laughs> you're like, it's ideally not very hard work, and no one <laughs> works on it at all. She, and she, as she was doing this, she was flipping out cards, and I kept asking her, what does that card mean? And then she wouldn't tell me. Oh. She, so oh. I I think I think the cards maybe we might have just been a prop. I don't know, but I was well, like, "What does that one mean?" It was a bad one. Well, well, that's what I. There was one that had a, a sword of, like a sword with a big heart on it, and I was like, "What does that one mean?" Hmm. And she was like, and then she just started talking about something else. Like she never actually told me oh. any specific cards, and she kept pivoting. And I was like, "I don't think you know what you're doing." Is there a chance that the actual psychic was sick, and she just oh. called up like a friend? Oh my gosh, she was a fill-in, a substitute <laughs> psychic. Substitute <laughs> psychic. <laughs> Didn't that work? I guess wrote her name on the board. <laughs> All right, kids, I'm wheeling in a TV. (laughs) And so then she asked me about my love life. And this is where it took a really weird turn. Because I said, oh, um, I've been with the same person for eight years or maybe nine years. And and then she stopped me and was like, no, 
you're bored. And I was like, oh, no, I don't think that's what's happening. And I was like, oh, no, we, we got engaged. You're getting married. She's like, it's boring. You're very bored. You're unfulfilled. You're frustrated. And like, she kept, she kept like trying to. She's trying to break you up. Well, yeah. I don't know. And does it, is it nearly going to work? Like, did you go, hang on, actually, yeah, I am bored. No, I was like, oh. what the fuck? You're crazy. What are you talking about? <laughs> I love my girlfriend so much, you dumb idiot. What and are you also, about? like, if uh, anyone ever has the, the, the chance to meet Michael's fiance hum, yeah. the last word you would ever use to describe her is boring. Of course. Yeah. She's a she's an ongoing, <laughs> she's an ongoing tornado of chaos that <laughs> makes my life a, 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 a sometimes. Sure, quite difficult, but most of the time, very interesting. I would say she's definitely not boring. But Ron, I think you're right. I think people must come to psychics often with um, a, a kind of variety of pretty um, predictable problems, and they just kind of like go through their list of stuff. Or this person, at least, just went through a list of stuff just to see if I latched onto anything. But I feel like for me, it was a pretty unappealing experience. Yeah, it made you um, more anxious, if anything. So yeah, I'm absolutely. So sorry. And and quite combative with this old woman, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah, that you wouldn't ordinarily have been like in any other day. There was only one specific prediction she made. Oh. One specific one that I'll be able to fact check in a couple of months' time. Ooh. Right? When I mentioned to her that Hum and I were getting married, she pointed at a card. I can't even remember what was on it. Was like a, it was like a, an axe or something. And she goes, she pointed this card and she goes, your wedding will be a cold day. <laughs> and I was like, what? And she was like, very cold. Very, very cold. So um, the, the, uh, we're getting married in August. Mm. So it's winter. I okay. mean, obviously, you know, she, yeah. she's done. She's done. She knows her seasons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that can be something I can actually fact check because that was the only very specific prediction she gave. But that uh, cold does suggest death, doesn't it? Doesn't yeah. it? The way she said it was pretty ominous. If I'm, oh. Yeah. Uh, maybe she's quite frustrated. Uh, uh, but Lewis, how was your psychic experience? Well, so obviously uh, I, I knew that you were going to what I would call your traditional psychic. Sure. Mm. So I thought I'd try something with a little uh, bit of a different flavour. Mm. I went to a guy who does Turkish coffee readings. Interesting. Oh, what yeah. is a Turkish coffee? Well, what's a Turkish coffee? You don't want to know about the psychic. You just want to know about the, <laughs> the beverage itself. Sorry, I'm, it's, I'm uh, thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? You schmucks didn't offer me a drink. <laughs> um, uh, it's just, it, you never had a Turkish coffee? It's like regular coffee, but with it's thicker. It's very thick. Oh, delicious. Very, yeah, hmm. uh, kind of. Oh. It's actually not that delicious, but I don't want to um, get into it. It's nice after a big meal. I quite like it as a digestive. It's quite oh. muddy. It's Isn't like drinking coffee mud. Missing out. Okay. Um, and yeah. so, the, they, what, there was leaves in it or something? So there's coffee grounds. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> it's not well, logistics tea. of that. So uh, he's a psychic as well. He's a psychic. He reads faces. Uh -huh. um, and Reads faces? Yeah, he reads faces. Um, and Imagine if he read faces. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, he's like um, it's like David Attenborough sort of walks <laughs> around <laughs> crumbling through. Um, so he go, you go in. He goes, let me look at your face. Did he make an assessment based on your face? So it was all it's all together. He says he oh. pulls from everything all at once. Yeah. There's a bit of faces, a bit of coffee. So we sat down. I went to his apartment. So I went to his apartment in um in Again, King's Cross. Very amateur vibe. I think with your guy, with your per, with your people, they're like, I'm at my job. You know what I mean? Right. I'm here at work. Mm. Come in and I'll toss you a reading. Right. Whereas with my guy, I was like, no, this is your whole way of life. Mm. Like I'm here. I'm at your apartment. You're a psychic 24-7. And you, you know? I guess, in the classic sense of the word, he was an amateur doing it for the love of the psychic. Kind of. That's yeah, what I was. Okay. I was like, oh, you were forced into this. It was your calling. This isn't you doing a grift. Yeah. Oh. This is you. Okay. You were, and he told me all of the stories about how when he was young, like six and seven, he started to have these like, feelings and he told his dad not to get involved in this business deal and his dad did it anyway and he lost all their money and i was like man and obviously you know you can't fact check this but i love this guy sure. the other thing about my guy dennis um first of all he, it's turkish so it's d-e-n-i-z so i was like denise and he's like uh it's dennis <laughs> I was like, okay great but uh, i got in there and he uh looked incredible like he just he had a great voice. He had a. He looked like a psychic. Kinda. How old do you think this guy was? Well, here's the thing. I was like, "How old are you, Dennis?" And he said, "And I would have guessed, thirty-two. Okay. He said, 50. Whoa! So, so he had a good face. That's it. Huh? And straight away, you're like, "There's something mystical about people who Botox, don't age." <laughs> I mean, it's not out of the question. Huh. 
But it didn't. He didn't look like he didn't look too smooth in the weird right. way. Okay, okay, what about lips? Did he have his lips done? No, or? his lips were just <laughs> beautiful. <Interesting>. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, when you say he looked like a classic psychic, what do you mean? Well, I guess I just I would mean... have said classic psychic would be old and haggard and uh, I've been alive for four hundred years. Yeah. You know? We're thinking witch though. I think yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean that is my brain. Yeah. <laughs> I think this was a guy who there, he had a very ethereal presence, uh-huh. mm, floaty, um, floaty ah. and also. Ageless, huh. okay. floaty and ageless. He made us a coffee and uh, we sat down and I was, in my mind, I imagined, I was like, if this is a scam, if I was running the scam of a psychic, I would keep it vague. That's what you do, right? You'd be like, oh, you're going to be happy. Like a or, horoscope. Yeah. 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 And so straight out, like, I'm going to play you some audio from, from Dennis. <gasps> and this, is, this was the very first thing he said to me, right? He hit a he hit one of those bowls, like one of those little meditation bowls, mm. and I was like, he'll be super vague. Don't be afraid of any form of dementia in old age. You will never have it. Oh, Boom. wow. Straight but, I mean, off. he said that you'll never have it. Yeah. I know. So that's don't I... be afraid of dementia because you won't get it, yeah. is what he's saying. I know. And I was like, that's oh, to know. well, that's it. Honestly, th- that was the very first thing he said. And I was like... And a bit like you, it. I suddenly realised that I was quite afraid of having dementia, and I hadn't really thought about it. Can yeah. I? And you'll remember him saying that you won't get it. I mean, yeah. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. This, 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 this to me. I, I hate to be the one to point this out. Sure. But if, if he's wrong, you won't be able to understand that he was wrong. Hmm. No, but because um, you'll get dementia. Sure. And then who, who, you're you're going to complain? Like you're not going to be able to. You but I'll like... have flashes of lucidity. <laughs> and in those moments, I'll go, I'll write a complaint. Dennis! <laughs> <laughs> because that's the thing that it, like occurred to me too about you going to his apartment. Apa- like, unless he's just moving from place to place, he's made himself very accountable. Mm. Like, you know where he lives. You yeah. know his name. Whereas my lady, who knows if yeah. she's back there? Yeah. She's just a substitute. Exactly. <laughs> you go back in there and it's like a fishing shop and yeah. you're like, what? <laughs> 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 I swear, last week this was a psychic. And then an old fisherman comes out. He goes, well, Michael, there hasn't been a psychic around here in 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> so did he make any other predictions? He w- he monologued at me for an hour and 15 minutes. What? Making Whoa. non-stop prediction. Boom prediction. Boom prediction. Damn. Boom prediction about everything. And you were pleased with everything? He was honestly, he's a pretty big fan of the life of this guy. Oh I- my gosh. <laughs> That's great news for you. Some of them were weird for sure. Like he, he did, went through a lot of work stuff. Um, relationship stuff. He said very nice things about my partner Alex. Yeah. Um, he said pretty named no- her. Uh, he didn't name her, but he was like, he was like, I see a blonde woman in your life, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my, girl. Oh. that's my girlfriend Alex. Okay, yeah, yeah. You think too vague? Yeah, too vague. But also, he's like, yeah, he pinned you down to be a blonde woman guy. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? I feel pretty good about it because <laughs> I feel like people who are normally blonde women guy don't look like this. You know yeah, what I mean? That's true. I think I'm breaking the stereotype. Yeah, all right. Uh, Actually, but- that's what Hum said when I, when, I, when I was telling her about the psychic. Yeah. Um, I said, oh, she thinks you work too much. She's like, she's just seen that you're Chinese. And she thinks you've married another Chinese people, person and that's the problem. I'm like, oh, my goodness. It's racial profiling. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a couple of weird things he said. Um, and I was t- talking to Alex, uh, my girlfriend, about this uh, last night. She he predicted we'd have three kids: oh one girl, gosh. two boys. Interesting. Pray now, our other children on the on the <laughs> cards? We've, we've got we've got an eight week old daughter. Like the yeah. last thing we're thinking of is another child. Well, you got to plan early, you know. Mm. Um, and but then he oh he gosh. was. <laughs> you actually don't look like you've gotten over that. No, I haven't. <laughs> no. I'm like, I don't want three kids. No. And the thing is, Alex. Once I told Alex, I think I could see her think a bit like. Yeah, three kids sounds nice. I was like, oh, fuck oh, you, this Dennis. This is the way you had the conversation. <laughs> yeah. And Alex is called Dennis. Like, <laughs> she's just been feeding him what she wants to hear. But he he predicted that our sons would be circumcised. Oh. And he was like, I don't know why. It won't you be religious Jewish. reasons. Oh. That is wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to predict right? the dick status of your <laughs> unborn sons <He> was, <laughs> is a crazy thing to do. That is wildly inappropriate. Why? He's a psychic. <laughs> Yeah, but like, just like, even if you have that thought, shut the fuck up. Don't say that. Don't like. No, but Dennis doesn't imagine. have a filter. Dennis, Dennis has. Dennis said right from the start. He's like, he said, I have no filter. He actually said, 
I'm a bitch. <laughs> He said, I'm a, I can be a real bitch. And I was like, fuck yeah, Dennis. I love you. That's, that's, can you, can that's you, what, but this is what I mean. This is why I warmed to Dennis. And I really warmed to Dennis. I have to say this. I, I like him. Like, whether or not it's true told, or not, he told, time will tell. And he told you everything, foreskins and all. Well, because <laughs> without giving too much away, I'm not circumcised. It's completely breaking tradition. Like, and he couldn't know that. I was wearing underwear for a change. <laughs> but he but he referenced dick dicks a couple of times, and he used the word dick, which was always because when he was talking about my um my mental health, he was going he, he talked about he was like uh when he said I'm not going to get dementia, he's like you get to live a long life. He said the only thing I see is some stomach problems. Um, he said. Sometimes when you get uh, nervous before a presentation or something, and I was like, I hundred percent do that. Like when I get very bad anxiety, I just vomit, uh, which is very embarrassing. Interesting. Um, but he was like, it will never go down to your dick. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> like, He's so thanks, dick Dennis. focused. Yeah, yeah. He, he is dick focused. Also, it doesn't take a psychic to know that you're not going to vomit out your dick. Like that's not how. <laughs> That's not, that's not what aren't. you call it, or. <laughs> but what, do you, what does that mean? Am I silly? Mean? Like, what did it Is mean he that he wouldn't go down? To, it wouldn't go down to your dick. No he, impotence. Is that no what impotence. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you like a flaccid fellow on account of anxiety. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Hmm. He just said whatever it was in my stomach wouldn't go down to my dick. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's so, great news, I guess. Thanks, Dennis. I mean, now that he said it, I can see you with a girl and two boys. What do you? Well, of course. Ne- wh- why? What do you mean? Well, I imagine it now. Now that he's yeah, yeah. I can see the, you with two little like surfy grommet boys. Oh, that's you nice. With a, as a dad on the beach, do you I know, can see that. He actually made a prediction about the last the the end of my life. He said in the in the last twenty years of your life, he said you'll move somewhere very boring, like Newcastle or the Central Coast. He goes somewhere terrible, <laughs> but it will be heaven to you. <laughs> oh wow. See, wasn't it funny that they both said things about being boring? I wonder yeah. if psychics mm. just think lay people are boring. And yeah. so that, like, makes its way into... Well, every, I mean, if you're a psychic and you can tell the future, everyone must be thrillingly of boring they to you. Would. Yeah. Yeah. Like, everyone who does not have access to the astral plane <laughs> must be... <laughs> and imagine being a psychic and having to simple. talk to, like, yeah. us at a party or something. Yeah. You're like, shut up. I can talk to God. Like, yeah. mm. <laughs> Well, I also asked him about the success of this podcast Uh because I felt like we had to know, right? Slightly different take, I'm afraid. Oh, Battle of the Psychics. Yeah, (laughs) so this is what Dennis had to say about uh, the podcast. I hope this work is going to be successful. Mm. Even if not, according to my cup for you, imagine it's a test and trial, which is okay but not great. Uh Uh-huh. It's like one of those series. Oh, they only shoot the first season, then it stops. Sure. But it was it's memorable. Oh, yeah. that's brutal. One season. One and done. On. I yeah. mean, maybe Hing gets an offshoot podcast from this and leaves you behind. I'm glad you brought that up. Someone's getting an offshoot podcast and it's not Hing. It is opening another door in the same institution. Uh-huh. One of the big heads is going to lo- like your podcast. The way you do your things, uh-huh. and the way you present, and your ideas. Uh-huh. Another idea is going to take off, not this one. So, oh, okay. Ooh. Yeah. Damn. Sorry, Hing. Sorry, everyone. Well, I'm glad we got to do one episode of this. Podcast. <laughs> 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 but yeah. we don't. We don't know whose psychic, psychic is right. Is right. Like Lewis, as far as I know. Has no circumcised son. <laughs> Can know? I just say, you've really come around on this psychic you hated before. <laughs> Suddenly, yeah. oh, Hing psychic's the one you believe. Oh, no, I really believe well, in this she, person she... I was trying to trick. <laughs> she, I, was, I, was just, I was just trying to be neutral so uh-huh. that I could fully immerse myself in her work. No, you tried to entrap her by Googling the stock market. Just in case they were spying <laughs> on me, Lewis. Just in case they were spying. Yeah. Oh, that, that's, that, <laughs> Turns that out tone. they weren't. The, <laughs> so the joke was Very on you. Yeah. 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 That's come from somewhere. Yeah. Um, actually, speaking of mm. um, sort of seasons of things and if things will go on, oh, yeah. I had forgotten, um, I'd forgotten during my reading that... I'd forgotten about my new job during my reading. Oh, yeah. So I got, at the start of the year, I got a new job at The Project, which mm. is a, a show on Channel 10. Brag. And I, well, no, it's relevant because I, well, hang on, it's, hold on to that. Oh. It, <laughs> it might start off nice, but it goes downhill pretty quick. Because I said to her, we, we had like five minutes at the end. She was like, is there anything else you want to ask me about? And I said, 
oh, actually, yeah, I got a new job at the start of the year. I'm, how's that going to go? And she goes, I can see you doing it until the end of the year. But then it is unclear. I don't know what's happening <laughs> after that. And I was like, what do you mean? I've got a... I, I, I thought I had a multi-year contract. Am I? <laughs> and she's like, ah, this show, this new job, it it might not be working. Anyway, so she's obviously reading the Daily Mail, so a couple of <laughs> couple of things about the ratings of this project. Uh, oh, my gosh. You know, your marriage? Marriage, your, yep. Um, yeah, obviously, cold day, yep, end the, of the contract. The only thing the that she was positive about <laughs> was the podcast, okay? Hold so I'm going to tell you, it, if this doesn't work... <laughs> The rest of my life is <laughs> fucked, okay? <laughs> Obviously, I, can, I cannot speak to the accuracy of Dennis. I don't know yet. Uh-huh. But I, I did leave a bit like you. I left being like, there was something about just going like, I'm not going to get dementia. Or, and I'm not, and I'm going to live a long life. And I'm going to like be with my partner and I'm going to have kids and I'm going to keep working. There was something that like zoomed me out a bit from the just like constant internal little turmoil that I constantly live with hmm. that made me sort of go, oh, it gave me a little sigh of a breath where I got like, I reckon I got about 24 hours of relaxation that's, from Dennis. That's not nothing. But then, oh. <laughs> then it all, then the doubt started to creep in. And then I started to worry about if he'd been like implanting things, like if some of the things he'd said, I was like, well, what if that only happens because I've gone or like he's trying to like, I got into like, like a future paradox, a uh, neuro linguistic programming or something. That's right. And he's trying to say some keywords to you. Yeah. And then, like, you know, three years later, you're trying to chop kill the son's president. Dick in- <laughs> oh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're trying to moil, you the DIY moil situation. Yeah. Yeah. Can I be honest? Yeah. These doubts, I think that's mostly on you. I don't yeah. think that's on Dennis. That's yeah. what I mean. I, I agree. Like, yeah. Dennis I is like, wonderful. We all agree that. Yeah. On that I feel point, like, yeah. I feel like you're. Pre-existing anxiety, yeah, that he managed to, um, you know, alleviate for uh, for a period. I think has has just sort of risen back up to normal. Yeah, and I yeah. think actually you might need to go and see Dennis every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as we all reflect on our, um, I guess, journeys to the astral plane with various mm. psychics, Ron, for you, was the psychic a silver bullet? Ah, uh, yeah, it was. Uh-huh. I'm cured. <laughs> Outsourced. Would you genuinely say like it helped? It has helped you long term. Like, obviously, not. we're not saying psychics are the same as a mental health professional, but for you specifically, do you think that helped? I think it really helped in me just having someone tell me everything was going to be okay. Yeah, oh, as a reassurance technique. Now, did you yeah. not have any friends or family who would do that? Or <laughs> Yeah, but they can't talk to the, the future. Yeah, and How I think having an outside voice telling you. And also someone with a calming presence. She's coming in neutral mm. and says, right, I don't know you from a bar of soap. Yeah, I I'm think a things stranger. Gonna be okay. Yeah, I'm a stranger. I'm looking at you. Some really good stuff's on the way for you. Okay, what Wink. about... Oh, sorry. Mm. Are you... No. Okay, what about for you, Lewis? Honestly, I think I the fact that he managed to shake my anxiety even for 24 hours mm. means that I have to give it it might not be a silver bullet, but it's kind of like a bronze bullet. A bronze bullet. Mm. Like it's a temporary it was a temporary solution. And if someone said should I go to see Dennis, I would I would I mean I wouldn't recommend it to everyone. Mm. I think I wouldn't recommend it to someone who I think is too impressionable. Like I do wonder that I think you need to be able to take a psychic a little bit with a grain of salt. Um, but for me, hell yeah. I mean, okay. <laughs> I might go back. For me, I would say tin. A tin bullet. <laughs> ba- barely functioning. A soft, malleable metal. But I will say that given how the three of us have rated the psychic, it does feel that it does feel that our ratings reflect our attitudes going in. Hmm. And maybe a psychic's the kind of thing where you get out of it what you put in, you know? I went in paranoid, frustrated, and I came out mm. paranoid and frustrated. Ron, you went in thinking you could solve your problems, and it did. And Lewis, you were kind of confused by the whole thing and remain. For me, I would say tin. A tin bullet. <laughs> ba- barely functioning. A soft, malleable metal. Useless in most armed... Useless in most armed situations. Tin bullet for me. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at silver.bullet at abc.net.au. Um, and you can let us know about your silver bullets, things you've tried, things that have worked. Um, or, let's be honest, if it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye!